four, three, two, one, and liftoff. It was the afternoon of May 14, 1973, when the unmanned Skylab Saturn workshop was hurled aloft at Cape Kennedy, on the way to its assigned orbit 236 nautical miles in space. The cloud cover was heavy on launch day and prevented tracking cameras from seeing an event that occurred about one minute into the mission. At the point of maximum vibration, telemetry sensed premature deployment of the meteoroid shield, followed by a weak electrical signal from the workshop solar arrays. Clearly, there had been a problem, but the exact nature wasn't known until after orbital insertion. During the first revolution, Skylab temperatures began to rise rapidly, and pieces of the puzzle started to fall in place. It was felt that the meteoroid shield had been completely lost at deployment, which accounted for the high heat levels. Also, that fragments of the meteoroid shield had jammed or otherwise hindered full deployment of the solar array panels. By early evening, workshop temperatures had risen above the level of safety. Launching of the crew the following day received an indefinite hold. Flight support and engineering teams had the major objective of designing a thermal shield that could be deployed on the workshop to make it habitable. By the fifth day of the mission, the choice had been narrowed to a model called the Parasol. The crew, meanwhile, made ready to embark on their historic mission. This all-Navy crew consisted of Captain Charles Pete Conrad, Skylab commander, a veteran of both the Gemini and Apollo programs. Commander Paul Weitz, who would be Skylab pilot for the mission, had been a member of the support crew of Apollo 12. And Commander Joseph Kerwin, scientist pilot, who would be the first American physician in space. The 10-day delay had been a giant cram course for all concerned especially for the crew. And their job was only partially complete. The execution of all the planning effort was now solely in their hands. By mid-afternoon, the crew had overtaken the workshop. TV picture beginning to come in now to the control center. Skylab Houston, we're AOS in Guam for the next 10 minutes. There's a bulge of meteorite shield underneath it in the middle, and it looks to be holding it down. Roger, copy. My guess is that our easiest thing to do is to just go to the end and try and deploy it. Before docking, the crew attempted to free the wing. Although the try was unsuccessful, the TV pictures seen here proved invaluable in devising the technique that ultimately worked. By late afternoon, the canister was positioned in the scientific airlock, ready for parasol extension. Some four hours after the operation began, the thermal parasol was deployed. It was then placed in position close to the workshop skin. It took about two revolutions of Skylab before temperatures began to fall. Projections showed that if the present trend continued, the workshop would be below 100 degrees the following day. It wouldn't be the most comfortable environment, but after a discussion with the crew, the decision was made to proceed the next morning with the normal flight plans. 